You've seen it. That dreamy, cinematic moment where snowflakes drift from the sky like nature's confetti. No urgency, no chaos, just a gentle, hypnotic fall that makes even the loudest city feel like a whisper. But here's the thing. Snowflakes aren't defying gravity. They're not enchanted. They're just obeying some surprisingly complex physics. So why exactly does snow fall so slowly? And more importantly, why does it land so softly like nature itself is patting the earth for a nap? Let's take a deep dive, preferably in a parka. First, what is a snowflake? Really? Before we talk about the fall, we have to talk about the flake. A snowflake is a single ice crystal or a cluster of crystals that forms high in the atmosphere. It starts out as a speck, a tiny dust particle or pollen grain. Water vapor condenses around it, freezes, and grows intricate branches as it tumbles through super-saturated air. But here's the wild part. Despite their delicate look, snowflakes are actually made almost entirely of air, like 90 to 95% air. The rest, ice, in lacy, fragile arrangements. This makes them incredibly light for their size, and weight matters a lot in falling. Why snow falls? So slowly, snow doesn't fall like rain because it's not built like rain. A raindrop is dense and compact. It plummets. A snowflake? It drifts. Because of its low mass and high surface area, a snowflake experiences massive air resistance. Imagine a parachute the size of a coin. That's a snowflake. It flutters, flips, rotates. It doesn't drop straight down. Each movement increases drag and slows its fall. Most snowflakes fall at 1 to 4 feet per second. That's like walking pace. Meanwhile, a raindrop can fall at 20 miles per hour or more. Also, temperature and humidity affect flake structure. Big, fluffy flakes fall even slower than small, compact ones. So, when it's just the right kind of cold and moist, say around 28 degrees Fahrenheit with lots of moisture, you get those big, floaty flakes that look like someone shook a pillow over the sky. And don't forget, wind plays a role too. Snowflakes often drift sideways, swirl, or dance in spirals as they're carried by gentle breezes. It adds drama to the descent and makes a snowstorm feel more like a snowfall show. Why snow lands so softly? Now for the second part of the mystery, why is snow so gentle when it touches down? It comes down to energy. Falling objects convert potential energy into kinetic energy. But snowflakes, thanks to their slow fall and low mass, have very little kinetic energy. When they land, there's barely any impact. Also because they're mostly air, snowflakes cushion each other as they pile up. They don't pack tightly like marbles. They stack like feathers. That's why fresh snow feels soft, even spongy. You can step on it and leave a perfect footprint. You can face plant in it and survive with dignity mostly intact. And when enough snow piles up, it becomes a natural sound absorber. That's why everything sounds hushed during a snowfall. The snow muffles sound waves. So why does it still hurt when you get hit by a snowball? Ah, now that's a different science. A snowflake is soft. A snowball is a weaponized clump of compressed snow. When you pack snow tightly, you eliminate the air gaps and turn it into a cold, icy projectile. That slow, soft landing magic? It disappears. Instead, you've got a slushy baseball flying at your face. And if the snowball partially melts and refreezes, congrats, you just made nature's ninja star. How snowflakes help science. Snow isn't just pretty, it's revealing. The way snow falls tells scientists about atmospheric conditions. Large, fluffy flakes? That means the air is humid and the temperature is near freezing. Small, hard pellets, colder, drier air. Meteorologists use radar to detect the shape and speed of falling snow to help forecast storms. Even satellites can observe snow cover and infer climate trends. So every snowflake is basically a tiny weather report falling from the clouds. A weird twist. Snow can also fall fast. Not all snow is slow and gentle. Graupel is snow that forms when supercooled water droplets coat a snowflake, turning it into a soft, hail-like pellet. It falls faster, lands harder, and can sting if you're caught in it. Think of it as snowflakes going punk. Then there's sleet and ice pellets, which are partially melted and refrozen snow or rain. These fall quickly and pack a punch. So, if you ever feel like the snow is attacking you, you're not wrong, just being pelted by one of its meaner cousins. Here's a quirky truth. 10 inches of fresh snow might weigh less than one inch of sleet. That's because snowflakes trap air like crazy. The fluffier the snow, the more air it contains. Skiers call this powder. It's great for gliding, but terrible for snowballs and snowmen. On the flip side, wet snow, near melting point, is dense, heavy, and perfect for packing. 
So the next time your driveway is buried, remember, not all snow is created equal. 10 inches of powder is a breeze, 2 inches of wet snow, that's backbreaking. Here's a fun mind bender. It snows on other planets too. On Mars, it snows carbon dioxide. Yes, dry ice. On Venus, metal snow might coat mountain peaks. On Titan, Saturn's moon, it snows methane. Every world has its own version of winter, but Earth's snow, still the prettiest. The physics of catching snow on your tongue. If you've ever stuck your tongue out during a snowfall, congratulations! You've performed an experiment in surface tension and thermodynamics. As a snowflake lands, the warmth of your skin instantly begins melting it. But the cold air surrounding your mouth often causes it to hover just above the surface for a split second, delaying contact. That floating sensation? Real? One of the most embarrassing dares we've ever done in the snow is sticking our tongue to a frozen metal pole. Sounds harmless, right? Just a little tongue to metal action. But if you've ever tried it, you know what happens next. You go in confident and come out frozen in panic because within seconds your tongue is stuck, like really stuck. No jokes, no pulling it off without risking a tiny piece of yourself being left behind. So why does this happen? Why does your tongue get glued to frozen metal of all things? Not to ice, not to wood, just that one unfortunate pole behind the school. Here's the science behind the sticky horror. Your tongue is warm, around 98 degrees Fahrenheit, and moist because of saliva. Now, when that warm, wet tongue touches freezing metal, metal pulls off the heat super fast, faster than most other materials. That's because metal is an excellent conductor of heat. Unlike wood or plastic, metal doesn't waste time. It yanks the heat out of your saliva so quickly that the water freezes on contact. The moisture on your tongue turns solid, bonding to the metal surface like icy super glue. And just like that, you're trapped. Pulling away? Not a good idea. That frozen bond is stronger than you think. And if you try to yank your tongue off, the skin might come with it. Ouch! So what should you do? First, don't panic. Second, do not pull. The best way to escape is by warming the metal. Pour warm water over it, or have someone gently blow warm air on the spot. Assuming you can find a friend willing to breathe in your face while you're tongue deep on a pole. In the end, it's all about physics. Cold metal, warm tongue, rapid heat transfer, instant regret. And that, my friends, is how you turn a winter dare into a lesson in thermodynamics and humility. And the taste? Scientists say pure snow tastes like almost nothing. But in cities, it can actually absorb atmospheric pollutants. So maybe stick to the poetic idea and leave the eating to the penguins, or at least after the first few inches. Ever noticed how snow reshapes everything? Flat roofs sag under its weight. Tree branches arch and groan. Fences vanish. Footpaths disappear. The world gets a redesign overnight, and it's all thanks to a billion featherlight flakes acting together. That transformative power has inspired everything from snow forts to igloos to the curves of winter ski lodges. Even architects study snow load patterns to design safer buildings in snowy regions. So snow doesn't just fall, it sculpts. There's also something undeniably emotional about snow. For some, it brings nostalgia. The memory of school snow days, hot cocoa, the quiet joy of untouched white blankets across lawns. For others, it offers a kind of peace, a visual and auditory calm that's hard to find elsewhere. Studies even suggest that the presence of snow can lower stress levels, partly due to how it reduces noise and brightens landscapes. That brightness, by the way, isn't just aesthetic. Snow reflects up to 90% of sunlight, making the world glow in a way few other weather events can achieve. It's like nature's way of pressing pause, a reminder to slow down, breathe, and watch something fall, not crash. So the next time you see snowflakes drifting down, remember, they're not lazy, they're aerodynamic wonders. Tiny, intricate sculptures of water and air, shaped by temperature, tumbling through resistance, and landing like whispers. There's an elegance in their slowness, a softness that belies the complex physics behind every flake. It's not just weather, it's nature performing a delicate ballet, one flake at a time. And in that moment, when the world slows down and white dots dance in the air, you're not just witnessing a snowfall, you're watching physics in motion, gentle, silent, and miraculous. Snow doesn't just fall, it tells a story, one flake at a time.